This conference will now be recorded. So hello and welcome to everyone. Uh, this is the webinar uh, for the Power BI and uh, today we have Moise Ali and uh, this is session number 26 by Excel Basement Private Limited and today uh, we will be learning about how to implement classification and regression in Power BI using PyCaret. So Moise Ali is basically a founder and principal author of PyCaret, data scientist, machine learning and AI. He is the analytics leader at PwC Canada and uh, he has some qualifications regarding the cost management accountants. So I welcome again to Moise uh, for this his uh, second mm -hmm. webinar at, at this platform and I'm very grateful and uh, uh, I hope that every every participant would be learning uh, with less coding and, and take the advantage of this tool by created by the uh, Moise. Uh, for for a number of users who are taking the advantage. Uh, so Moise, uh, the floor is open for you now and you can take the uh, webinar. Uh, thank you, Rain. So can you confirm if you can see my screen and hear my voice? Yeah, this uh, the voice is audible and the screen is visible. Okay, perfect. Uh, hello everyone on the Saturday morning, my time, I don't know, I think if you are in different time zone, uh, good evening or good afternoon based on that. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, uh, let me just see, I'm having some. Okay, thank you for joining. So, nervous about myself, uh, as Ray mentioned, I'm a data analytics leader. I work for PwC Canada. I'm currently based in Toronto, but I've worked in four continents, uh, mostly in analytics and reporting role. Uh, and these days I'm in lockdown in Toronto, uh, but working. Uh, all right, and I'm pretty pretty active on LinkedIn, Twitter. So if you'd like to follow me or connect with me, uh, please feel free to do so. I'm a I'm also a very active writer in artificial intelligence and technology space, and I actively write uh, on Medium. So feel free to follow me there as well. Okay, so some important links before we get into the presentation because uh, this presentation is only one hour, and I would be on, I, I would I would be able to tell you only so much, right? But there are a lot of resources uh, on PyCaret available uh, in, 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 in article form or in video form or in podcast. And what I've done is I have uh, put a link of those resources here in the presentation. So if you would like to uh, go through them after all, uh, after this presentation, uh, you, you would easily find uh, this presentation. Uh, you would easily find links in this presentation. Uh, what I've also done is I have uploaded this presentation and all the links on this GitHub repository, uh, pycaret slash pycaret dash demo dash ev2. So you can download this presentation and all, all everything that we're going to do today from this GitHub, including the PBIX files that we'll use for today's demo. All right. Okay, so these are the resources. You can see... Uh, there are very specific uh, articles written for a specific purpose. And, 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 and so, for example, this one, build your first anomaly detector in Power BI using PyCaret. And it's just a 13 minute article. You don't need to have any background knowledge. What you can do is just follow the article simply and implement it, right? And there are many articles like that. I'm gonna leave the slides for you to explore it later on if you would like, but there are a lot of resources if you'd like to learn. Okay. So for today's uh, demo, uh, we're gonna talk about how to implement uh, supervised machine learning in Power BI. Uh, in past, we have seen clustering and anomaly detection, which is like unsupervised machine learning. And we didn't have to use any other environment other than Power BI to achieve that. But for today's demo, uh, uh, based on the nature of supervised machine learning, you need a trained model uh, to generate predictions. What we're gonna do today is we will train a model uh, and if you don't understand what is model that's that's fine we're going to talk about that uh, we'll train a model in, in in Jupyter notebook which is another environment it's like a software and we would import that model in Power BI and generate predictions uh, so we'll use Power BI to generate predictions on the new data set uh, and it, it, if, even if you don't understand the concept of a new data set or, or existing data set on which we'll train don't worry, we're gonna go through very basics uh, and that I, I hope that should happen. Um, so what do you need today to follow along this tutorial? You need Power BI desktop, obviously, uh, I'm assuming you would have Power BI desktop since you're attending uh, 
have Power BI session. You would also need Anaconda distribution with Python 3.6 upgrade. Uh, what is Anaconda distribution? It's, it's, it's a combination of tools. Essentially, you need Python, but if you have never used Python before, I think it's way easier. You can just download any, any pre-available pre distribution, which is Anaconda, which is very, very popular. Uh, in order to download that, you just simply follow this link and download. The setup is simple, next, next, next. Uh, while you're, if you're installing it for the first time, uh, towards the end of your setup process, it would ask you if you wanna add Python to your path environment, you should say yes there, and you should finish the setup. Um, and, and we'll see how do you know if the setup was successful and everything went okay, or there was something wrong. We'll, we'll see that. Okay, and you'd obviously need PyCaret, you need to install PyCaret, and we'll show you how to install PyCaret. Okay, so assuming you have went through this link here and downloaded Anaconda distribution, I'm gonna just open it in front of you. So if you go to this link, Towards the very end, you can you come here and you would see Windows, Mac, Linux based on your operating system. You can download uh, Python 3.7. So I have downloaded this one, 64-bit Python 3.7. I already have it installed, so I don't need to. Uh, but once you have this installed, uh, you need to create an environment. An environment is like a container uh, where you would install your softwares and dependencies and you would link that to Power BI so that you don't, if you are doing multiple projects at the same time, you don't mess up all the projects. That's why we create an environment to kind of isolate uh, a specific software, right? Uh, and in order to do that, we need to run this four lines uh, in, in the command prompt. Uh, and if you are not comfortable with command prompt, I'm gonna show you it's, it's, it's for you, it's just copy and paste if you don't want to understand more than this, right? But how do you do that? You go to start menu, Anaconda prompt, which looks like command prompt, black screen, right? And you would copy this first line, conda create name Power BI Python 3.7. And what you are saying, and what you're saying to Anaconda prompt here is create an environment named Power BI. You can name it whatever you want. In my case, I have named it Power BI. So you should run this command. And it would ask you with a prompt of yes or no, you should press yes. It would take 10, 15, 20 minutes, right? Depending on the computer. I'm, I'm not gonna run this command because I have already installed this beforehand. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna activate the environment. So see my screen. You see this base written here, right? Because at the moment, this command prompt is uh, is 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 set to my base environment. Since I've already created an environment, I'm going to activate that by typing conda activate Power BI. And now you see I am in Power BI environment, right? And the third line is you install PyCaret. Uh, I have already obviously run this command. I have PyCaret installed in my environment. But if you if you don't have, you just type pipe install, pip install pipe. I'm not gonna run this command again because I've already installed it. Uh, it would take 10 to 15 minutes again. And the last part is uh, this command here, the fourth line. And and our fourth line, and again, you, this, this to Power BI, it can be whatever you want to name it. Uh, obviously, that's why they are in red color for you to understand these are these are variables that you can set. These are just names. When you run this command, what it does is it would initiate a Jupyter Notebook link to this environment. And I'll show you in a while what is Jupyter Notebook, but very simply, it's, it's, it's a software where you would write some code to train a model, right? So, and this fourth command would take, take less, less than 20 seconds. So uh, if you have issues following this, uh, feel free to reach me out or log an issue on GitHub and somebody would help you. If you are using Mac, uh, then you might have to do some separate installations for uh, some of Microsoft frameworks. Uh, so if you go to pycaret.org slash you would find a separate set of instructions for, for Mac users. Okay, assuming all this went well, let's get started. And what I'm gonna do today, uh, I know some of you, uh, some of you would have an idea about uh, 
machine learning and might have used uh, Python before. Give me a second. Yeah, might have used Python before and already know what is supervised and supervised machine learning, but assuming that some of you wouldn't know that. So I, what I'm gonna go through is some basic definitions for, for people who don't know to, to just uh, get, get up to speed. Okay, so this, this is the diagram uh, just based on the fact uh, of, of the hype of artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm sure you, you would have seen this diagram before. What this is telling is uh, deep learning and machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. And what is artificial intelligence? It's a, it's, it's a technique that enables the machine to mimic human behavior, any kind of human behavior. So if you have a machine uh, that has camera in it and it can see objects and detect objects, that's like a human, human, human ability of vision uh, and understanding to perceive that, right? So that's AI. Uh, as basic as uh, uh, your email provider, uh, their ability to classify emails as junk email or genuine inbox email, that's also a very basic type of AI that, that exists from last, I don't know, 80, 100 years maybe, uh, not 80, 100, but 50 or 60 years. Uh, but uh, so driverless cars uh, is another example of AI. So the, there are a lot of things that falls under AI because the definition of AI is so generic that anything that mimics human behavior or human abilities is is AI. And we have sense of uh, we have sense of vision, we have sense of hearing, all those things. So in, anything to do with uh, listening to audio and converting into a text is also uh, part of AI, right? But what we're gonna do today is not gonna talk about fancy AI things. I'm gonna unfold the hype a little bit and take you down to, to, to machine learning specific. And I'm gonna uh, talk about some very context specific uh, uh, examples so that it's very easy for you to understand. All right, so what is machine learning? First thing we know from the earlier slide, it's a subset of artificial intelligence, but what it is actually. So machine learning is an application of AI that provides the ability to automatically learn. So instead of you setting if and else rules, machine learning uh, is works on phenomena that it learns automatically and it has ability to improve over time. If, if you don't understand this, no problem. Understand this thing only. The goal of machine learning is to predict outcome based on historical data. So if you don't understand the fancy definition, just follow the simple one that you, you would use machine learning to predict an outcome based on historical data, right? And there are three types actually, uh, there's another type these days, very, very famous. We're not gonna talk about that, but primarily there are three types, supervised, unsupervised, reinforcement. Unsupervised is what we have done in past, like clustering or anomaly detection, where we didn't have an outcome to predict. Instead, uh, what we were doing is, uh, we were either categorized, either, either, either categorizing them into buckets through clustering or identifying outliers through anomaly detection, but there was no target. Supervised learning, uh, more commonly used, or you would you normally find more use cases of supervised learning, it's a task-driven machine learning. That means that you'd have a variable to predict, right? And then reinforcement learning is, 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 is a totally different thing where you don't have targets, but you set goals for machine and it kind of improves itself uh, over time by achieving those goals. All right, so there are, so we, today we're gonna talk about supervised machine learning only. And when we talk about predictions, there are only two possibilities for predictions. One, you predict a continuous value such as sales amount or revenue amount, consumption, temperature. And you would have heard this word regression and that's what it is. So if you want to predict an outcome which can take a continuous value between zero to infinity, it would be regression. But there are uh, times where you don't have a continuous value. What you want to predict is a discrete outcome, such as whether the customer would leave or not, whether the person has disease or not. So binary or even if not binary, but discrete outcomes, right? So that's what classification is. Um, we're gonna see two examples today. Uh, both are exactly same, except for the use case itself uh, in terms of how to use it, it's exactly the same, but obviously the concept is a little bit different. We're gonna see both of them uh, and, and you would find them really easy to follow. 
hopefully. Okay, so let's see an example. Let's say company ABC wants to predict sales for next year based on the historical information. And there are only two data points this company has. It has uh, GDP percentage and sales. And assume that this company is in the business which is highly correlated with uh, GDP of a country, right? It's in kind of a business. So given this data set, this company wants to implement machine learning to predict what would be the sales of 2020, given that we know what's the GDP percentage. And if we talk about statistics 101, you would see, uh, you would plot these on, on a scatter plot, on x-axis you would throw in GDP, y-axis you would, you would throw in sales, and you would examine the relationship. In this case, you would see it's kind of a linear relationship, and you try to fit a, a best line in the middle that you would use for predictions, right? Uh, this is the this is linear regression and uh, linear regression is is one of the algorithms used in uh, machine learning right um, and now obviously there are limitations for linear regression it's simple but it cannot model the real world uh, complicated uh, model right and therefore there are several other algorithms that we're going to talk about uh, but let's see another example so this is regression anything you do with continuous value and it it mostly comes natural to people because uh, we, we we are surrounded by a data which which is which has uh, more continuous value or I would say if we are not coming from machine if you are not coming from data science or machine learning uh, regression is more natural to you than classification but let's let's get classification out of the way through an example so let's say a bank wants to predict whether the customer will leave or stay right now this is a discrete choice one or zero true or false, right? So this is the perfect example of classification. Look at this data set. So this is a, this is a dummy data set that I created just as example. A bank has this uh, data set where each row is a customer and each column is attribute or characteristic of customer. And at the end, we have this stay or leave. One would mean uh, leave or zero would mean stay or any which way. And bank want to build a model where they would feed this data, the characteristic of customer at, at a given time interval to predict whether the customer would leave or not leave next month, right? And they can use this prediction to, to, to customize their follow-up strategy or marketing strategy. For example, they would, every month end, they would have a process where they would feed in the data to, to a train model, get the prediction out, and based on the predictions where machine says the customer would leave, bank would run a promotion or a separate promotion for those customers. Right? This is one basic example of how, how, how companies would use it. All right, so there are, there are three, three, three major components of uh, machine learning. First is data. So if you don't have good data, you cannot do machine learning. It's totally reliant on your historical data. Now, when you talk about data and if you're an analyst, the first thing comes to your mind is rows and columns. Right, but there is also unstructured data, which means images, video, audio, text. You're not gonna talk about that, but just as a, as a side note, uh, whenever somebody talks about data, it could be it could be anything, not just rows and columns. But today's demo is obviously based on structured data. Uh, we're gonna look at the data set which has rows and columns. It's like a normal data set. The second thing you would hear people talk about features in machine learning and they are also known as variable attributes, independent variables, but the easiest way to think about features is columns. Columns in your data set are features. Uh, obviously, there, there are a few technical nitty-gritties. I'm not gonna go, go into that, assuming uh, you're you at a beginner level. The easiest way or the most intuitive way at the moment to think is columns are features of your data set. And the third is algorithms, a uh, very important part, but and you would have heard uh, linear regression is, is an algorithm, decision tree is an algorithm, and there are several fancy algorithms, but does, does this have anything to do with you at this point? Probably not. So what is algorithm? It's, it's a math that takes an input, do some calculation, and gives you an output, right? I, should you be bothered at this point if you, if you don't know this math? Uh, can you not implement it? Well, you can, so it's the same notion. You don't know how the engineering or dynamics of power works, but you still, you, you can drive, right? So same concept. At this point, in order to implement it and build that intuition, 
you obviously don't need to know the math because you are already using uh, you're, you're just implementing it to, through 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 softwares right you are not writing a new math in order to excel in data science and machine learning would you at any point need to understand that math absolutely yes uh, absolutely yes but today it would not stop you to implement what we're going to implement but obviously in long run you would want to uh, not only build your intuition but also uh, get understanding of what's happening under the hood all right okay so having talked about all that what is PyCredit? so PyCredit is a software so we call it libraries in python python language uh, it's a software uh, which allows you to train that machine learning model, which you would connect it with Power BI for today's demo, right? So you would train that model in Jupyter Notebook, which is a software which we installed through Anaconda distribution. And in that software, you would use PyCaret to actually take your input data, train the model, and save a trained model. And then in Power BI, we would load that trained model to generate the predictions, right? uh that that's that's i think that's that's all you need to know about PyCaret at the moment it's a software to train and deploy machine learning models all right so let's move to demo um and let me let me open the first thing i'm so okay so let me show you this data set first so this is the data set right each row is a customer and each column is like a feature uh, and based on these attributes age sex bmi children smoking status and region uh, we want to predict what would be the charges of a patient's bill so these charges are basically hospital charges and based on these six factors we want to predict what would be the charge and why would somebody do that so this is basically uh, a toy data set uh, and business scenario is insurance company would want to do that and why they would want to predict the charges when the patient comes into hospital and if they can accurately somehow accurately predict the charges that would help them to to do their cash flows uh, very accurately right so that that's the use case why would somebody do it so we would now use this data set to train a model right to predict charges and then on front end in power bi uh, we'd assume that new data is coming in in Power BI through some kind of ETL pipeline that you have built. If you know Power BI, you would understand that what is ETL pipeline. And then as the new new data is coming in, the train model would generate this column for you. You Obviously, because these are future data points, so you don't have this column, right? And that's the point you are predicting. Anyways, now let's get started. Uh, with training of model uh, and to train model we would use Jupyter Notebook and if you have installed Anaconda correctly what you need to do is just type Jupyter and something like this would open click on that uh, and you would get into this page right and when you come here all you need to do is go to new select your environment so remember my environment name was Power BI right select your environment to create that notebook you might not see all these options because I, I'm working with five different environments. You would only see Python 3 and Power BI or whatever the name of your environment is. You should basically click new and open that environment. Okay. And then you would open something like this. Right? Obviously, it would be a blank notebook, uh, but I'll show you, uh, show you this code. Right. So this is the first chunk of code, uh, which is reading this file in 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 jupyter notebook right and where is this file insurance.csv in the in the same folder so i've created a folder where i have this insurance.csv and i have this uh, notebook file here right and the extension extension of notebook file is ipyn right and pandas is is a library uh, that that deals with reading and writing data right tablet data. so i'm importing pandas and reading this file and data.head means just show me the sample rows. As soon as you run this command, this is the same Excel file that we have seen, right? The first step, you load the data. Second step is you import PyCaret and then you initialize the setup by telling PyCaret that this is my data set, this is my data set, and this is my target charges, right? And if you run this code,
it would uh, give you uh, it, it would print a print a table with data types uh, asking you to confirm if everything is okay so age is numeric right sex is categorical all right so if, if you if you don't know a difference between numeric and categorical it's uh, basically numbers that can take continuous values are numeric but categorical data uh, which is which is not number uh, such as male female region country uh, yes or no that they, they are not numeric and in machine learning we deal there are different treatments for categorical data sets and numeric data sets and so many things but you don't need to worry at, at this point about those because PyCaret, the whole point here is PyCaret is going to handle them behind the scene right i'm going to press enter here and it would do a bunch of things behind the scene and now i'm ready to train my model uh, and as easy as it may sound there were if you were to do it manually you would do a couple of things here right because you cannot work with this data set male female there are missing values you have to encode them you have to impute missing values you have to do different things but since we are using PyCaret, we are not worried about that at the moment should you know what are those things well absolutely if you want to become a data scientist or work in this field you should you should know uh, what is going on under the hood by reading documentation if you want to understand PyCaret specifically you can read documentation but obviously this is not an exemption for you to not know the things this is kind of a tool that would make you productive but this doesn't guarantee you that you i mean you getting that knowledge uh, and and using it is a still is still you have to do it right so this is not an exemption uh, or this will make things easy for you in a way that you don't have to spend hours and hours in coding uh, or debugging your code but you still have to gain understanding of why we are doing what we are doing, right? Anyways, okay, so training the model in PyCaret, which is normally a few lines of code, or if you are training complex models, it may become a couple of hundreds of lines of code. In PyCaret, it is as simple as writing create model, right? And LR, what LR means that linear regression, and there are there are about 20 or 20 or so models in PyCaret. So if, if you see the documentation of this, this is the list of models that you can train. But, and what are these models? These are algorithms. Every model, every algorithm has its own specific maths. Uh, to, to train a model, would you need to know that maths at this moment? No. But in order to, uh, if, if, you're, if you're really serious about it, at some point you'll have to start understanding uh, what goes behind the scene, right? So at this point, let's keep it simple. Let's train a linear regression model and store it in variable LR, all right? Okay, you'd get this table, which is if, you, if, you, if you're not into machine learning, you might, it would not make sense to you at this point. But all this is, is we have repeated this process 10 times. That's why there are 10 rows here. It's called cross-validation. And then this is the mean and standard deviation of this. And the numbers are metrics. Uh, that's how we know how good or bad our model is, and there are several different type of metrics out of a six is printed here so uh, let's simply take r square so this is 0.7248 which means this model has an explanation power of 72 percent not exactly but so it's it's intuitive to understand that this model explanatory power is 72 percent right at this point we are not very much concerned about accuracy so we'll go ahead and just finalize this model and deploy this model but normally you would try different models, different techniques, different options before you actually finalize the model, right? So let's go ahead and just finalize this model by using finalized model LR. That's it. And now we want to save this model uh, as, as a file, as a pickle file. Pickle file is a, is a binary format uh, uh, of, of, of the models, uh, one of the fine binary format that you can use to save your model. So at this point, this model is in Jupyter Notebook, but in order to deploy it or generate predictions from it in Power BI environment, you would need to save it as, as a file. In order to save it as a file, this is the function in PyCaret, save model, save my final LR and, and save it as, as a regression, right? And as soon as I run this command, let me show you my folder, you see this file here, regression.pkl, pickle file, right? 
and this file 12.7 kb because it's a very a small data set and just a linear regression model this file is what we need to import into power bi right so again the process is we load the data we initialize setup in PyCaret. The setup would do several things. You train the model, we finalize the model, and we save the model. When we save the model, it not, it's not only the, the model object, but the entire transformation pipeline. So if you have uh, if you have background in machine learning, any anything that you would do in setup, any pre-processing, so for example, you would create feature interactions or new polynomial features, or you would one hot encode it, all those, uh, objects are automatically saved in pipeline and when you save the model in PyCaret, it would save the entire pipeline for you right otherwise think about this if you would only take model in power bi it wouldn't work because your new data set unseen data set would have male female smoker yes and no you need to convert that right you need to encode that so you need all the transformers along with model so with PyCaret, all that transformation is also saved when you save the model right and that saves a lot of time. All right, so now we are done with our first step. We have imported the data set in Jupyter Notebook, trained the model, saved the model. Now we have a model file, right, which is sitting here in this directory. Now, what I need to do uh, is let's assume a scenario that we have an ETL pipeline uh, set up, and every day, every night, uh, we have a, a schedule refresh set up in Power BI and new data points would come in every night, right? Except for the charges column, because that's like a future point. And we want to predict that. So let's open Power BI regression. Okay, so what I have also done is obviously because I didn't have future data points for, for this data set, it's just a dummy data set. What I've done is I have created a new file, insurance underscore new data. And I've just taken sample raws from my original data and removed the charges column because just to kind of mimic the original scenario in, 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 in real scenario, you wouldn't have that charges column, right? So I've created this, this is also on GitHub. And what I've done as a first step is I have imported this data set. Uh, I've imported this data set in Power BI. Okay. okay, let me let me open a new Power BI file. This this Power BI file is there on GitHub, so if you'd like to see. Uh, that's that's always there, but let me let me do it from scratch for you. Okay, so a new Power BI file. The first step is to get the data. In real scenario, obviously, it would be connected to some kind of SQL server or pass instance. But at this point, we'll just use CSV to mimic it, right? So, insurance new data. Okay, and transform that. Right. So, how, how, how does it work, right? So, in order to to generate predictions in Power BI uh, using train model, you have to execute a Python script. Uh, why Python script? Because PyCaret is developed in Python. And in order to execute Python script, you would execute it through Power Query Engine, right? Which is which is this. Uh, and uh, how you can execute Python script is by going to transform and run Python script. And you would see. Yeah, so this this is this is where we would write our script, and this is uh, and and once we execute the, that script, we will, we should be able to see a new column with prediction, right? And let me write a simple code here from PyCaret. Dot regression import all. 
I'm going to load my model. Um, and where is my model? So I'm going to go to here. I'm going to copy this, change this to backslash. And my model name was a regression. Right. I'm going to quote it. All right, so this line is nothing but just loading that train model that we have seen as a file. And then reduce predict model function, which is Pycarus internal function, and pass the data as data set. Right. This is going to generate the predictions and attach to, 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 to this table. Take, may take a while. All right, this is what you would see uh, as, as a first step, data set and table. This is a hyperlink. You have to click on table to expand the table and see the results. All right, there you go. So this is your data set. And then there is one column named label is attached to that data set. And what is this label? This is basically prediction generated from your train model, right? And then you can simply close and apply. It would go to Power BI and then you would build your dashboard just like you would build any other dashboard, right? Now, in order for this to work, uh, in production, uh, automatically you would need a, a gateway uh, that would that would be linked to your uh, Python environment. Uh, so there is there are a few steps that you need to do if you want this to be automatically working every night in production, right? But it's not it's not that bad, right? Uh, you have to set up the environment for any production grade application. So it's the same same thing, right? So let let me uh, switch over to second demo which is just gonna be just gonna be similar uh, except that instead of regression it would be classification which means that we will predict a uh, discrete outcome and let's do that i'm gonna open my second notebook okay, so we have it here in power bi all right so this is my this is my data set for second notebook and the data set name is employee and what this is each row is is an employee and each column is 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 characteristic or feature of an employee so satisfaction level last evaluation how many projects this employee has done how many hours this employee work in a month time spent in company the employee had any work accident uh, did, did he get promoted he or she get promoted in last five years what's the department what's the salary and left so this left column which is one or zero which indicates that whether the employee has left the company or not right and the objective of uh, of this uh, this training uh, would be take the inputs about the employee and predict whether the employee would leave at certain time period right at this moment i miss i'm missing the time context in here normally you would implement this kind of project at, at a given time right at the end of march you would take the input and you would predict whether the employee would leave in april or not right so there would be a time context to it but uh said that uh, let's let's uh, let's train the model so the first step if you remember from uh, last notebook is to initialize the setup in PyCare, right uh, the only difference is last time we wrote this PyCare regression now we wrote this PyCaret classification import all because this is a classification problem. Why? Because it's a discrete outcome. We are predicting one or zero instead of a continuous value like in last month, right? So everything else remains. Here. So I'm going to pass data and my target would be 
this column name left, right? So this is how I would initialize it. Oops, I have to reload this and then this. So it would do the same thing. It would infer the data types and print the grid. Right, and assuming everything is fine, I'm going to just press enter. And that's it. So I'm done with initializing setup. Now let me train model. Let me also train a linear model, uh, which, which is called logistic regression in case of classification. So in previous notebook, you have seen something similar to this, bunch of numbers, 10 rows, and then on column there were metrics, so similar concept, except for that in classification, uh, there are there are different ways to evaluate. Uh, and at this point, let's let's see. This model is performing with 0 0.8940, which is 89% accuracy, right? Assuming we are not bothered by the accuracy of model, let's go ahead and finalize this model. and save this model. Let's save it as classification, right? And now if I go back into my folder, I have classification.pickup, right? And let's initiate a new file here. And similar to uh, insurance, I have another CSV here, employee underscore unseen, uh, which is nothing but the, the same 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 file. I've picked up uh, 50 points randomly, removed the left column, uh, just to kind of mimic uh, the real life scenario. Okay. All right, so let's do this, get data. From CSV, employ unseen. Transform data because we'll execute a script, Python script in Power Query. Transform. Transform and then run Python script, right? So same blank window would open and we would write our code from PyCaret classification, not regression, import all model is equal to load model and we'll have to pass our i think this was a demo eb yep and the name of the model is classification let me wrap it change the and then data set is equal to predict model model data set that's it so uh, what we are expecting now is is a new column uh, with one or zero indicating whether the employee would leave or not in regression you you get one column indicating uh, the, the, the the prediction itself but in classification you get two columns one column would be the label itself which would say one or zero the other column would be score which is which is probability of that event happening right so not just one or zero but also what is the probability of that particular thing happening right uh, so same thing you would get this you'd have to click on table and if you're setting up in production this is this is only one time right uh, i hope it's clear to everybody we are only doing this one time so what we are doing is we are injecting pycaret in the etl pipeline okay 
and it's it's it it even doesn't matter whether you are using Py, uh, Power Query or Alteryx or Nine or any other thing or SQL as a matter of fact. If this can work here, it would exactly work the same way in any other environment, right? Okay, so let's see our original data and then we have two columns, label and a score. And what it means is there is, uh, so this particular employee would leave and there's a probability of 81% of employee leave, right? So same thing, in regression you get one column, in classification you get two columns. One is label, the other one is just a probability. Right, and and it's it's really useful. Uh, we're not gonna go into why why it's useful, but it's really useful to know what's the probability of everything. Okay, I think with that said, I'm at the end of my presentation today. It's good. I have 12 minutes to take questions, uh, and I will now open up the floor for questions. Okay. Um, give me some another link to install Anaconda. Um, not sure what I'm gonna do is paste the same. Is is this link not working for you? So. This is for 64-bit Windows. I've posted the link here. It's a direct link. In my laptop, 64-bits don't install and 32 bits don't completely install. Well, you'll have to figure out a way to, to, to work with 64-bits because if, even in Power BI, if you're working with 32-bit and you're working on large data set, it would crash again and again. So you'll have to, I think it's good time that you upgrade to 64-bit. Thank you for free. So I'm unable to run Jupyter Notebook. Uh, you'll have to, you know, you'll have to tell more than that for me to answer. Like I, I don't know why. Can we get this coding? Yes. Uh, so this notebook is also uploaded on GitHub. Uh, the link is in presentation. Let me type the link again. So I've just typed the link here in chat and that's the link where you can get this notebook from. How can we implement, so Faraz Ahmed, how can we implement the same in Power BI service? So Faraz, uh, so what you would do is when you are developing your Power BI project, you would still uh, predict, you would still uh, I've inject the model in Power Query, which would be on your desktop. Uh, your question is, when I publish this, how would it work, right? So the way it would work is you would need a enterprise gateway uh, on a on a computer where this environment was created, and you would you would set that gateway to work with the schedule refreshes. And if if everything is set up correctly, every time when Power BI service is refreshing uh, the data set, it would also so what happened when power when, when whenever there is a refresh in power bi service it actually uh, it's actually uh, executing your etl scripts as well now power uh, now prediction is part of your etl script and that's why it, that's how it would work if you set up that gateway Leonardo, what is the procedure adopted in PyCaret to hyperparameters tuning of classifiers and regressors? So that's a little bit advanced question uh, for, for, people, for somebody who has not done uh, uh, machine learning before, uh, but that's a valid question. So Leonardo, we have we do we have a custom grid setup for each algorithm in PyCaret, uh, and uh, what we do is a random grid search over those uh, tuning grids. Uh, and the function to do that is tune underscore model. You, you can simply create model by create model, but if you want to tune hyperparameters, tune underscore model is the function, and when we do random grid search over the predefined search space. Um, can you share the code link with dataset so that, yeah, everything is Karthik, uh, everything is uploaded on GitHub, uh, PBIX files, dataset, unseen dataset, and Jupyter notebooks. 
Faraz, I think I, I think Faraz, I answered your question. If if there is a enterprise gateway on computer which is allowing the schedule refresh, it, it would work. Um, what do we do if our model does not have high square, high R square, or have a high predictability power? Uh, the, the short answer is uh, feature engineering. Uh, so if your original data points are not enough to to, to generate good enough predictions, uh, then what you would do is you would do feature engineering. That means that you would create columns which are not uh, available in the data set, but you would use your business or domain expertise to, to come up with those features. Uh, and in, in real life, I would say uh, not getting models with high prediction is not a wrong answer. It's, it's also a right answer, just that the answer is this data set doesn't have prediction power. So not every data is predictable, right? So you, the first step, you do feature engineering, you try to improve it, you try different algorithms, different techniques, different tuning techniques. But even after doing everything, you cannot do it. That simply means that there is no predictive power in that data set. In this context, Bayesian optimization could be useful. Yes, Leonardo, it is. Um, but we are not using Bayesian optimization. We are using random grid search. Uh, are there any openings on that? Okay, I don't know that. Morgan, do you train people online? Do we? Yeah, so I don't train people. Uh, PyCarrot is open source, uh, and all the resources of Py re related to PyCarrot or whatever we do are free and available online. Uh, follow hashtag PyCarrot on LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, or there's a YouTube channel where there are a lot of videos and resources. Uh, so I think, and everything is free. So I think uh, that's that's where you want to go. All right, let's give it a minute more. Okay, so I think, um, thank you, Raheem. Um, uh, thank you, Moise. Thank you so much for coming again and presenting a very good session for us again today. And um, definitely, uh, PyCarrot is <laughs> doing a magic for us now uh, for less coding and uh, a more fruitful outputs as well. And um, I'm planning to uh, apply on my client data set from the next week, and I will tell you the output what the client is uh, giving a feedback by using the pie carrot. All right. So thank you so much, everyone who has joined us today. And thank you, Moise, again for your time and knowledge. And we would like to see you again, inshallah, very soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye.